The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 36. That's probably what I'll title this thing. This is a popular verse. A lot of videos on this on YouTube, especially from Christian gun owners. Um, and I'm not saying you can't defend yourself or you can't own firearms or anything like that. There's more to this than what most people get out of it. Verse 36, Jesus, he said to them, But now let the one who has a money bag take it, and likewise a knapsack, and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. This is out of the ESV. It's not my favorite, but it's easier to understand. So Jesus tells them, Get some cash together. Go buy a sword. A lot of people take this and say, Okay, I'm a Christian. I can own fire. They're doing self-defense here uh, for safety, obviously going into a tough situation. And uh, Jesus says they, they should arm themselves. Okay, if you look at just that verse, that's that's what I get out of it. If you read just that verse. Um, well, it doesn't fit with everything else Jesus says throughout the New Testament. But, okay. He's, you know, he's, 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 um, he's got to have them armed up. You know, the guards are coming to all this. Uh, but you really need to look at the rest of this. The verse before this is Luke as... Uh, 35 and Jesus speaking again and he said to them when I sit you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals which he did previously when I sit you out with nothing did you lack anything he's asking the disciples and their response nothing we lack nothing she's already he's taken them before and for quite a time sent them out with nothing and make it on their own preaching the gospel Next, then he says, okay, uh, but now let the one who has a money bag take it. Likewise, knapsack, sell your cloak, get a sword, this thing. Next verse after that, 37. For I this is important. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And I was going to tell what that scripture is. In quotes, and he was numbered with the transgressors. For what is written about me has its about me has its fulfillment. Now, most people will not bring this one up who are promoting. Oh, this means that you can have firearms. They they don't seem to get to the rest of this here, all right? So they miss the actual the whole scope of what's going on here. Let me repeat this thing again. Jesus basically says, this scripture must be fulfilled because I read it here in the Old Testament. I've got this scripture here. And it says that one of the things that's supposed to happen is that I am, and he was numbered with the transgressors. So he's, he's setting this thing up. It's another fulfillment. There's a lot of this statements made in the Old Testament where when this Messiah comes, when he shows, it will be like this. This will happen or that will happen. There's a whole bunch of them. He'll be killed this way or he'll be done this way or they'll do him like this. And so when it happens, it's letting you know it'll, it, these statements are made. Oh, here's another fulfillment. And sometimes you have to read commentary to find those. But there's all sorts of fulfillments so they can actually say, this is the Messiah. Okay, not that guy or this guy. This guy's the Messiah because he's, he's, everything's being fulfilled. Okay, so he has to be numbered with the transgressors. So what does he do? He has his guys get some swords. Peter goes, cuts the ear off of a, a, a guard. Jesus puts it back on. And now they're officially viewed as transgressors, I would believe. Okay, um, uh, 38, and he said, look, Lord, here are two swords. He said to them, it is enough. So if, if you look at just the single verse in 30, Luke 22, 36, tell them to go buy swords. Okay, as a believer, he's telling them to arm themselves, and I should be able to arm myself. Okay, fair enough, cool. But if you look at it from 35 to 38, he's setting up another fulfillment, which is actually far more important. Um but that's a really big deal, okay? So there's more to that. And someone says, that now, am I saying that Christians shouldn't own firearms? No. Should they not defend themselves? No, I'm not saying that. Um, but there's something more going on here than just that. The, um, if you, really, as a Christian, if you're going to own a firearm, as long as it does not affect your attitude as a believer, you are still merciful, forgiving, Peaceful, you know, all the, all the um, I got to dig that up. That's in, in first, Peter, uh, first or Second Peter, and either Colossians or Galatians. Well, they give they give you a list of, of uh, characteristics of a believer. 
Okay, I should I should find that. I'll get that up later. But the uh, the characters, you shouldn't do anything, any behavior, thoughts, whatever you're doing, activities that do not enhance those quality behaviors. See, if you're like, well, I'm working at it, I'm like this, but then I go in this other behavior over there, and I'm not following those characteristics anymore. That's a problem. Okay, whether it's you own guns or whatever you do. Um, another thing, and you can look at this, and this, I'm just, this is just the way my mind works. This is not biblical, what I'm about to say. It would have made more sense for us, or the way people think, if Jesus, if Jesus had said, let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one, because you need to protect me on my way to the crucifixion. Okay, This did not happen. I'm making this up. But you need to protect me on my way to the crucifixion. I want you guys armed, and you're taking me into the city or whatever. Because there are a great many that would not have wanted him crucified. Okay? The people didn't know what was going on. Particularly the devil himself didn't know what was going on. He would have surrounded him. I don't want this guy dead. I don't want this deal made. I want a new covenant coming in. My gig is up. So there's a great, there's even a spiritual force that does not want this guy crucified. Had they known. Speculating wildly on my part. But if that was the case, you know, they said, well, we got to protect this guy up until his death so this thing could happen, so this fulfillment can be fulfilled and all this sort of thing. That might, um, that would be maybe interesting or something. But that wasn't the case. No, everybody wanted him cooked, then, you know, stream up, whatever they're going to do, crucified, because that was, um, was going to happen. That was their attitude. They knew what, you know, but they didn't really know what was going on. Otherwise, they would have stopped it. Um, but anyhow, great verse. Jesus said it. Wanted them to, to... Here's another thing. Now, someone... I made this video before, and I accidentally deleted it, so I'm making it again. So I feel like I'm repeating myself. Um, guard yourself. If you're a believer, you need to guard your attitude. Okay, like I said, I'll find it and I'll do another video on it as far as the char characteristics of a believer. That needs to be protected. It's, it's, hard, it's not easy to do. I make these mistakes every day. But you don't want anything that does not enhance or anything that, that diminishes those characteristics in you. Okay, take a look. If, if, if Jesus wanted all his disciples to be armed... Maybe to be able to protect themselves, like a lot of people are preaching here on YouTube. And I'm not pointing at any single person. I just I went and watched a few videos. Um, if if that was the case, what happened with Paul? He didn't get the memo. Paul was beaten, stoned. They threw rocks at him, not stone, but they you know, stoned him with rocks. Imprisoned. Um, he had plenty of opportunity where he might have been able to take his sword and defend himself. He didn't have one. Unless I missed it. Okay. Did he not... Someone shared that tidbit with him? Why didn't he... Here's another one. Stephen the Martyr. We'll go to the book of Acts, man. For, I think it's like in five, four, five, or six. Stephen the martyr shows up, tells the Jews, the Pharisees, whoever he's talking to at the time, basically lays out their history, explains what bozos they've been. Okay? It's like two, three pages. Maybe two pages. And really, it's a great, so if you lay out the history of these people, he really nails it there. And he just ticks them off. And so what do they do? They round him up, they drag him out to the edge of town. He knows what's going on. They drag him out to the edge of the town. They pick up the rocks and they stone him to death. But right before they do it, right before they stone him and kill him, he pulls out a sword. He you know charges the group. No, that's not what he did. He prayed for him. He said, "Father, do not let this sin count against them. Father, do not let this sin count against them." 
And they stoned him and killed him. Where was this defensive attitude that Jesus, some would say, was speaking of in Luke 22:36? Arm up. What happened to Stephen? They flat drug him. He knew it was going. They drug him out and killed him. What did he do? He prayed for him. Well, where was your sword, Steve? If you're going to fit the, the, what a lot of people preach about this verse, then fit. You go and go and think of any behavior we have or something you might or I'm doing, you're doing, whatever the case is, or this arming up attitude that a lot of people talk about in this verse here, and then go see if it fits with anything Jesus has said. It doesn't. It really doesn't. So I'm not saying you can't own firearms and you can't defend yourself where the case is, but um, the, this, this whole uh, self-defense attitude that we get from that verse doesn't fit with the rest of the book. Here's another one. I'll just I'll throw this in. I've made videos in the past where um, I did the one where I said I'm done prepping. I'm not a, I'm not prepping. Doesn't fit doesn't doesn't fit with my faith. Nobody agreed with it. That's okay. Um, but, and most people are nice about it, but they, they don't agree with me. But they go and they take a bunch of the Old Testament. Well, the Old Testament here, and you got this, and you got this verse here, and Joseph, and um, yada, yada, whatever. That's, I'll go off on a tangent here. That's all fine and good. But anytime someone starts throwing a lot of Old Testament at you, you got to ask yourself, who are they following? What are they actually trying to do? What are they actually studying? There is this will the Old Testament will not save you. There's nothing in, in the Old Testament that's going to save you. Leviticus, Book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Habakkuk, Ruth. There's nothing in there that will save you. The only thing that will save you is Jesus. See? We get that in the New Testament. I'm not diminishing the Old Testament, because this is what tells us this, this Messiah is coming. It's a great book. I love the Old Testament. But it can't save you. People want to throw these statements. You, you could take the Old Testament, <clears throat> you could take verses out of the Old Testament and rationalize just about any behavior. You can really get in a lot of trouble using the Old Testament incorrectly. But you can get all kinds of you know, wild stuff going on that you could, you could pull off at the Old Testament. But it does not fall in line with what Jesus is teaching. See, Jesus is the New Deal. So it would behoove you, if you are a Christian, a believer, to make sure who you're following. You could have in that Old Testament some of the things they've said there and did or done. That was for the Hebrew, okay, as an example for us. People disagree with me, I get that. Our saving is coming from Jesus. Every word he spoke, that's where it's at. And, and not to diminish it, but Matthew 5, 6, and 7 really narrows it down. Three chapters. Um, and so if, if, if you have a, um, you might have a behavior, I've done it, you might have a behavior that you could really rationalize with a couple of verses out of the Old Testament that is totally out of agreement with what Jesus is teaching. See, and I hear this a lot in this, this community of ours. I've made these mistakes. Okay. Um, so when you, when you hear a lot of the Old Testament, like I said, I love the Old Testament. When someone hits me with a lot of that stuff, I realize, eh, you need to get back in the New Testament because you're, 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 you're off track. You, should do these, you need to line everything up with Jesus. That's it. Um, I don't know where I've gone on this thing or whatever. Hopefully it makes some sense. This is, I'm not pointing this video at anybody. It's just um, some videos were made. And then I went and did a, um, It just got me thinking along these lines. It, it really, this is not even a VR. Um, a couple other videos I watched got me thinking about this. So I'm going to put this up. I did it once already. I deleted it. I had to do it again. You know, hopefully it made some sense. Um, I'm going to shut up. This is way too long. Love you. God bless.